Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Palestinian activists targeted with Israeli Pegasus spyware. Howard University students hold sit-in against unsafe housing. Codessa rejects continued Moroccan war crimes in Western Sahara. And Bolivian President Luis Arce marks one year in office. In our first story, six Palestinian activists have been hacked with the Israeli NSO group's Pegasus spyware. The findings are part of a joint report released by Frontline Defenders, Amnesty International and the Citizen Lab. Frontline Defenders investigated 75 iPhones and found that six had been infected with Pegasus. Three Palestinians consented to being publicly identified, including Ghazan Halaika. He works as a researcher at al Haq, and his phone was hacked in July 2020. Also named is Ubay al-Abudi, who heads the Bisan Center for Research and Development. Lawyer Salah Hamouri from the Prisoner Rights and Advocacy Group Adamir was also targeted. All three were part of the six rights groups recently designated as terrorist organizations by Israel. The tag will allow raids and arrests while prohibiting funding and other support. Three of these groups were working with the International Criminal Court. A secret dossier prepared by Israeli agency Shin Beth also showed that there was no evidence to support the designations. These findings follow reports of Israel using a sweeping facial recognition program in the occupied West Bank. Former soldiers told the Washington Post about the use of a phone technology called Blue Wolf. Thousands of photos of Palestinians were taken and stored in a database. The program would then match a person to one of these pictures. A soldier's phone would display a particular color to show if an individual should be arrested or detained. The Washington Post reported that the army also held competitions to reward soldiers who could take the most photos of people. In our next story, we go to the United States, where students at Howard University have been protesting for over a month. Since October 12th, a sit-in occupation has been organized outside the Blackburn Center. Students have denounced harmful and deplorable housing conditions, including flooding, mold, and vermin infestation. Dormitory rooms have expired air filters and images of mushrooms growing on ceilings and under sinks have been shared. Students have reported health issues due to these conditions. Meanwhile, on-campus housing costs start at around $12,000 per year. Beyond the campus, third and fourth year undergraduate students are struggling to afford increasing rent. As the protest continues, students are raising four main demands. These include an in-person town hall with President Wayne A.I. Frederick and a meeting with students' leadership to discuss the university's housing plan. Students are demanding the reinstatement of student faculty and alumni positions in the Board of Trustees with voting power. They have also asked for legal and academic immunity for students currently on protest. Students have also long opposed the university's contracts with private companies like Corvias for housing and Sodexo for the cafeteria. Sodexo laid off workers last week, which the university then tried to wrongfully pin on the students' protests. The ongoing sit-ins is being supported by the Live Movement, which is a coalition of students from other historically black colleges and universities. Student organizers have also set up mutual aid efforts, including food distribution outside the Blackburn Center. In our next story, Sahrawi activists have documented renewed abuses by occupying Moroccan forces in the Western Sahara region. The collective of Sahrawi human rights defenders, or Codesa, released a report on November 8th. It covers attacks carried out between January and November. The latest attack took place last week when Moroccan warplanes targeted Akhle Bath el-Fula region. 
three Algerian civilians were reportedly also killed when missiles hit a commercial convoy on November 1st. The attack took place at the border linking Mauritania with Western Sahara. A Sahrawi civilian was also killed in October when warplanes attacked a civilian car near Audi Quinta. Codessa has also documented attacks on livestock and transportation, among other things. It has argued that both the UN mission and the Red Cross have failed to conduct fair and timely investigation into the war crimes. This month also marks one year since the resumption of the war between the Polisario Front and Morocco. On November 13, 2020, Moroccan forces opened fire on a demonstration by Sahrawi activists in the Gurge Gorat buffer zone. Following the violence, the Polisario Front declared an end to the 1991 ceasefire agreement. Morocco's claims over Western Sahara are not recognized internationally. The region is considered a non-self-governing territory pending a final resolution. The Polisario Front administers 20% of the region as the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. And for our final story, we go to Bolivia, where the socialist government of President Luis Arce has completed one year. Arce, from the Movement Towards Socialism Party, won the 2020 elections with 55% of the vote. The crucial victory marked the defeat of the US-backed coup in 2019. Arce administration has taken key steps to provide justice to the victims of the violence. This also includes social assistance programs. The government has also taken steps to repair the economic damage caused by the coup leaders. According to the National Institute of Statistics, Bolivia's GDP fell by 12.9% during the second quarter of the Añez regime. However, the country is now on a path to recovery with an economic growth of 9.4%. The government also allocated $3.5 billion for the healthcare sector during the COVID-19 pandemic. It has procured over 15 million vaccine doses so far. As of November 7th, 33% of the population has been fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, the government has continuously faced destabilization attempts by the far-right factions. The Santa Cruz Civic Committee, in particular, has organized several supposed strikes. This was after Santa Cruz Governor Luis Fernando Camacho was called to testify regarding the coup. These far-right strikes have largely failed and have been met with counter-mobilization in defense of democracy and the Bolivarian Revolution. That's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.